Hey everybody, it's Mike from Order Flows, and today I'm going to be talking about understanding, you know, big orders trading in the order flow. You know, one of the benefits of using an order flow footprint chart is to see when size comes into the market and how it actually trades, as opposed to say looking at, you know, the the dome or a heat map or book map where you're just seeing the liquidity coming in and sitting there in the market. I'm talking about what actually trades now. A few things you have to keep in mind. Each market trades different volumes. Okay, so what's considered big volume in one market might be considered average or small in another market. You know, so for example, say you are trading e minis, you know, which trades a lot of volume. Um, you know, what's considered small in the e minis would be considered big in, say, um, gold or the euro currencies. So you got to take the time to learn what's considered big volume or above average volume for the market that you're trading. Now, how do you do that? Well, you will look at the footprint chart. And again, it's not like you have to analyze, you know, five years worth of data. You know, really what you're looking for is how the market is trading now, how the volume is going through, and if you're starting to see increases in the volume. So, for example, this is today in the gold. And... You know, this time it's it's about 11.30 going into uh, lunchtime. And you can see how the volume is, you know, more or less pretty light. Okay, you're seeing some small size, you know, 9, uh, 6, 2. You know, sort of the bigger volume that's being traded on the bid or the offer. Here you got 30, 29, 38, you know, 20, 20, 34, 17, 16. Um, here's 64, 46. So, you know, I, I'd guess... Anything over 30 would, you know, something that would catch my interest in the market. Now, when you're seeing big volume coming into the market, you, you want to take into account where it's coming in, right? Now, if a market is selling off, it's not uncommon to see um, big volumes on the bid side, right? Because, you know, people are working bids, you know, in anticipation of buying the market lower, okay? Just as um, you know, if the market was rallying up, you'd probably see some big offers coming in because people are trying to uh, take profits at higher prices. Now, where it gets interesting is, you know, when you sort of come down into a low, like right in here, okay, market sold off. Again, I don't say sold off, but, you know, it dropped from, what was that, about uh, 1945 down to 1943 pretty quick, you know, a $2 move down. And then, you know, we're seeing some bids in here right 47 lots traded on the bid right in here at 1944 you know and this was just below this sort of swing low you know people are they're trying to buy you know market had been going sideways right for the last um you know 20 30 minutes and so it's not uncommon to see people you know putting in bids you know just below the you know the swing low and they probably had some offers up here at uh 1945 60 or 1945.70. So here you got 47. Okay, market trades down through that. It comes down, hits a couple more bids down here, some decent size, 24, 27. Then the market starts creeping back up, starts creeping back up into this area that you had just been trading at. Okay, around the 1944, 50, 1944, 60, 70, 80, up to about 1945. However, on this way up, now First, let's talk before we talk about the way up. Let's talk about the way down. So we get through some size here, right? There's 50 on the bid here, 47, and as we're going down, you're seeing some not a lot of offers coming in, trailing it down. Okay, so what that's telling you is somebody's coming in here and cleaning out these bids, right? There's probably a big order that's coming through. It trades out the 47 lots, you know, the 17 trades everything out because there's very little counter trade here. So they're just coming in, hitting the bids, hitting the bids, hitting the bids. Gets down here, 1943.30. Um, okay, you see there's 38 that traded on the offer there. So as we're coming down, right, now you're starting to see the offer come in, trailing it down, okay, which is a sign of supply coming into the market. Now it gets through, you know, the 24 at 320, the uh, 27 at 310, and you know it trades all the way down to 270 okay now it starts to come back up but there's still a decent size offer at 42.90 here so you had a decent offer here at 43.30 another decent offer at 42.90 so there is um some supply coming in trailing the off trailing the you know the move down 
right? Basically, um, there's pressure on the market. You have sellers coming in, working offers on the way down. However, now, now it starts trading up. So we go through that 39 that were offered there, right? Trades the 39 there, turns bid for 15, um, 18 get lifted at 43, 14 get lifted at 43.10. Um, thin volume up here, you know, just very small size. But when it gets into this bar here, it's 32, you know, it's bid for 32. Well, it's probably bid for more, but 32 trade. So there's some absorption now you're starting to see up on the way back up as opposed to just offers getting lifted. So now, right, as the market was moving down, you have offers trailing the move down. Now on the move up, you're starting to see some support of buying, right? The 32, um, the 33, the 37, the 23. So on this way down, you're seeing what you expect to see on a, on a move down. It did hit its inflection point right down here at about 43, okay? Then the buyers started coming in. Right, the buyers came in. They aggressively lifted this offer here at um, 290. Right, bought it up. They're bidding it here at 43.40. Bidding again, you know, at, at 360, at 370, at 390, 44.10, 44.20. Right. So after you see what's happening in these three bars, okay, what should you be thinking? Well, this market probably going to go higher, and it moves back all the way up, back up to 460. Now. Yeah, then it just sort of went sideways and, and sort of dipped back down. But this area where you start seeing this, you know, this aggressive buying um, coming in, followed by passive buying right in here, you know, we'll call it this area right in here because this is where the, the interesting size that came in. And again, in the E-minis, if you're looking at, you know, 39, 32, 37, 33, that wouldn't be considered big size for that market. But for the gold at this time of day, that's considered big size. Again, it's all relative to the market that you're trading. So basically this area where you had buying interest come in here, okay? You had um, some aggressive lifting of the offers, then you had some nice passive bids following it up. You know, one of the clues of what can be happening is in the delta, right? You've seen the negative delta. People say, how can this market go up on negative delta, right? Because theoretically, you would be expecting a bar with negative delta to be going down, right? Because what is delta? Well, delta is, you know, the net difference of aggressive buying and aggressive selling. So if you have negative delta, that tells you there was more aggressive selling than aggressive buying. And generally, what's going to help move the market is the aggressive, um, in this case, would be the aggressive buying on a move up. People are buying the offer, taking out the liquidity from the offer and buy the next offer, then buy the next offer, they're clearing it out. But what's causing this negative delta is absorption. So you have bidders coming in here, passive buyers coming in, working bids. They're absorbing all the selling that's going on, right? Then the selling stops and aggressive buying takes over. And then they start working some more bids. They absorb all the aggressive selling, the aggressive selling um, tapers off. The aggressive buying comes in and goes higher, but there's just more aggressive selling than aggressive buying. It's not taking much on the aggressive buying to move the market higher. So you know, you're basically looking at a level between you know 42.90 and, and 44.20. You see how the market went up, came right back down to that 44.20 area right here, this blue line, and you know went back up. So it's acting as essentially a support area because. You know, at that area, you had buying interest, right? legitimate buying interest. And if you're just looking at the market, right, and you're wondering, oh, why does the market just come back to this level? Well, that's one of the reasons why markets pull back to a certain level and then continue on in their original direction is because it finds levels like that where there was buying earlier. Okay, so let's take a look at euro currency. Now, again, like I said, just to, to reiterate, you know, under, you know, volume is relative to the market that you're trading. So, you know, right now um, you know, I have this chart open. It's about nine o'clock in the morning and you can see the volumes that are going through. Um, you know, nothing really stands out above 100. You know, here's 254, but everything else is relatively on the smaller side. You know, 60, 52, 49, a lot of 40s. You know, here's 80, here's 91. So, you know, anything obviously above 100 which should get my interest. Obviously, the 254. Um, you know, kind of gets my interest, but then there's not much really else to go on afterwards that happened to it. Did the market go up a little bit? Yeah, um, it came in this 
254 came in at what is that uh, 108.68 and you know the market did start to rally a bit but again just having one bar with you know a big order in there that trades through is you know not always enough to go off of so you know just wait for something that makes more sense and as we get up here right we rally you know this red line is the low of the day so we rally up from uh, 108.63 and then we get up into this area, uh, you know, around 108.80, and we start going sideways. And what was interesting in here, you're starting to see some decent offers get lifted, right? Here's 156, here's 158, here's 163. Okay, so again, like I, I said earlier, it's not uncommon to see um, resting liquidity in the offers, uh, especially when the market is going up, right? Because people that bought earlier, um, you know, probably want to get out at, at higher prices. So to see you know, the market sort of come up here and, you know, trade that out, trade it out up here um, is, is not uncommon. Now, where it gets interesting is this here, this 152. So before, right, we had the market went up from 63 all the way up to, you know, basically 83, a 20 tick rally. And, you know, people that bought earlier, they're, they're getting out up here. But now what you're seeing is support of buying coming in here, right? You're seeing this bid come in here 152 right it's not coming in on the offer side it's coming in on the bid so now there's support coming into this market market is starting to go higher now you're seeing support come into the market so what do you think is going to happen well the one the support can hold the market go higher two the support can fail and the market can drop now again you know sometimes especially with euro currency um you know there's a lot of trade that goes on between you know a lot of arb trade that goes on between the cash and the futures but you gotta you know when you're invested in the market and you know you're trading you you, you want to sort of put the pieces together okay so I, I know I've got a big bid that came in here now this is an area that we had been trading in basically for since about 9 you know 924 925 it's 940 so about um, 15 minutes all of a sudden you're seeing a big bid come in the market okay all you got to do, right, you just wait for the market to give you some sort of confirmation that, you know, this market is, you know, this could be supportive for the market because if it's going to be supportive for the market, we shouldn't dip, you know, much below the, above the, uh, sorry, below that 108.80 level. And it just goes two ticks lower down to 79. You know, it didn't come down here, all, you know, it didn't pull back down to, you know, 76 or 75. And then you're seeing some more in the next bar. What are you seeing? You're seeing selling imbalances on this green candle right um, 20 against 4 43 against 9 so not only do you have that supportive buying in this bar in the next bar it's still there it's come back right even though you know this order got filled it traded a little bit lower next bar it's still there even at the next price it's still there so then this bar closes you know you could feel fairly confident that yeah you know what i think you know this probably some move to the upside here because I now I know I've got supportive buying right so this old business of this move up which was sort of closed when you know people were getting out of their positions here now you're seeing new business come into the market right new supportive buying coming into the market and what did the market do well the market went up from this 80 well this is 80 right but you know maybe you're getting in around 84 85 when, you know, all the way up to, you know, above uh, 109 even, right? So, you know, that's where understanding how the big size comes into the market, what effect it's going to have on the market. But again, you know, trading is a puzzle. You've got to put the pieces of the puzzle together so that you can understand what's going on. It's just not about seeing the big size. It's seeing where the big size came in in relationship to how the market is trading. So. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to be putting out more videos like this. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit the like button. Bye-bye, everyone.